Welcome back to my garage, everybody. This is it, the final video. I might do one more and that'll probably be a follow-up, maybe six months down the line or a year down the line so you guys know how this has been going, how it's been driving and handling. But for now, I don't really have any plans for it. As I always said, I'm not really a YouTuber. I don't know how to do this. This is my first foray into it and I hope you guys have found it entertaining or enlightening or that it's helped you out at least a little bit. Um, as I said before, it's like Asus said, it was for the people. Really, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for coming on by, back again and again to watch these videos. I have had a lot more views than I expected to have. Um, if you haven't seen the entire series, please go back and watch them. I go to everything from an introduction on myself, which you'll see how absolutely horrible my first video was, because uh, it was done in selfie mode on my phone. And uh, then I go into unboxing of the kill shot in the mini, and then I go into prep, and then I go into installation, and finally to this video. So take a peek at those if you haven't already. So if you're missing whatever you think you're missing, uh, look at those videos. I guarantee you I'm pretty sure I've covered it. If I don't cover something and you guys want have a question and you'd like an answer as to what it is that I did, um, hey, drop me a note inside of the comments and I'm happy to answer. Um, anyway, so stick around and um, uh, let's get into it. But one more thing, before I continue, uh, I wanted to put out an apology to Aces, okay? Um, very, very important. Uh, I am sorry, in one of my videos, I've actually made mention that I didn't know if this was a pre-opened kit because things were a little moved around and some of the padding was wrong. You can see that in my unboxing videos. And one of the things that I thought was giving it away that it was a previously opened kit was the fact that my handheld didn't have a clear plastic cover. I'll tell you what guys, I was wrong. About two minutes into this video, I'm gonna put a little blur because I finally zoom in using my camera on the handheld so I can show you how to do the wizard and stuff like that. And I realized when I look back at the video that the little tab is actually there so I can peel the protective cover off. You know what? I need to get or up the prescription to my reading glasses. So, so I'm sorry, Aces. Really, I really am. Aces has no, I have no issues with them right now. Their tech support has been pretty damn good and their customer service is fantastic. Uh, so again, I'm sorry to Aces. I, I do not believe this was a pre-opened kit. It just, yeah, I was stupid. So let's get on with the video, take a peek. Hopefully you enjoy. Guys, it's been a hoot. Thank you very much for stopping by. All right, here's a simple mistake that you guys should probably all be looking out for too, depending on what kind of transmission you have. Uh, I wish I could say this is the first time I've made this mistake, but it happened to me when I installed the exhaust system the first time ever. Uh, so here you go. If you're not careful, depending on how you orient that flange where the collector goes uh, to the rest of the pipe, you may just have interference with your shifter. I found out yesterday that I couldn't put it into drive, and this is why. And there you go. All I can go down into is neutral. So I have to reorient that. All right, we've finally reached that wonderful magical time where I'm gonna turn the key. Let's see what happens if this sucker actually lights up. Okay, well, all right. So far, so good. All right, we're gonna select kill shot. Well, with all of our sensors reading okay, I think we're gonna go to the wizards. I think you go up there and you touch wizards. And we'll get the start wizard going. Um, cam type, I'd say mild. I don't have a stock cam on this. I actually have a mild cam. Uh, a single uh, O2 sensor, that's right. And we're gonna go to coil negative because I am not doing a uh, ignition timing. And uh, wizard, let's see, number of injectors is four, four barrel. And I think we're supposed to leave it at 100 pounds per hour for the injectors. Okay, so here's where we need to go down. So I have a 327. Next. Uh, hot idle is about right, 850. I'm happy with that. And there we go. So everything looks to be okay. I love the fact that this thing is touchscreen. Engine displacement, hot idle. And hit my check mark. Are you sure you want to save? Heck yeah, I want to save. Get her done. Now please key off for five seconds to take configuration. All right. There we go. Everything should be all right now. 
cool so we're gonna leave that be all right and here's where uh everything is running now we don't have our pump connected because we are trying to run the mini and what we need to do now is i'm going to crank her for a little while because i have to prime the mini uh before i hook everything up so that's what i'm going to do next now that we're ready to go we had to prime the fitech mini uh, the boost pump in order not to make a mess because we have to prime it We have to run this and get all the fuel because the, all the lines were emptied out, right? So all the fuel has to come back up to here and fill this bad boy up before we can start running the engine So what I did in order not to make a mess because they say leave this open and wait until fuel comes spurting out I don't want fuel inside my engine compartment. So I put in a temporary uh, Line right here because I had some of these fittings leftovers with some of this hose and I'm running it right over to a fuel catch can so and we're going to do it this way in order not to make a mess. So the first few times of cranking this over is to prime the mini. Um, actually, one of the things that we really need to look is to make sure that we're getting RPM as we're cranking. So here we go. There it is. Okay. We'll check a few more times. We're going to have to crank this several times in order to prime the mini because that's a lot of fuel. And uh, we'll see how this goes. So we're going to crank it several times, about 5 to 10 seconds maximum each time until we have some fuel coming out of the overflow port. There you go. Now we know that the Fitech Mini is 100% filled and we can disconnect this, plumb the uh, return line back in, and uh, hook up our power to the Fitech Mini. Next thing you know, we'll be running this thing. So the last of the fittings is now nice and tight. And this was my return line. This is where I was uh, pumping out the excess to make sure that this was nice and filled. Uh, I don't have any AN wrenches, so I ended up having to use an adjustable crescent wrench um, with a little bit of tape on it so I don't booger these up. And the reason being is because uh, AN fittings don't really fit neither the standard uh, or the metric wrenches. But anyway, all that is taken care of. My positive, my pump positive cable and extension has now been completed and I crimped and soldered the end and now it's time to finally hook up the mini. Do not over tighten these. These are brass. Um, you, the last thing you want to do is strip these or break the pole off. I have heard of people doing that. That is a very bad day at the office. Don't do that. Okay, so if you're going to be doing something like myself, where you're going to be running a different kind of pump assembly that runs a different pressure, like the Fitech Mini, or any other kind of boost pump that changes your pressure, you're going to have to change that inside of the handheld. So what you're going to do is go up here to the little boxes, and you're going to go to tuning. After tuning, you're going to go to fuel. After fuel, you go to basic. And after basic, we're looking for rated injector pressure as you can see right now the system is set up for 43 and a half psi but we need that to be different so we're going to click on that and we're going to hit the check mark down below so here we go this is what we're going to do um if you hold down the plus it doesn't scroll automatically so what you either have to do is drag or slowly click this up now what i'm looking for is 58 psi because 58 psi is what my fitech mini is shelling out once that's done, you're going to hit that. And there we go. It's permanently set to 58 PSI now. And we should be good now. I think we finally made it. Ready to light this thing up and see if it runs. Now, I'm just hoping for an engine that runs right now. It's not going to be calibrated. Nothing's going to be set up. It's not tuned. I'll figure out how to do that. I just want the dang thing to run. And if we can do that, I'll be happy with it. Before you do that though, just because it's always better to be safe than sorry, have a fire extinguisher ready just in case you spring a leak that you weren't counting on and that you didn't notice before. Let's see how it goes. Everybody cross your fingers for me. Oh, I hear the pump running. I have a reading in here. Give this a go.
Okay, I've restarted this thing about five times now and I've adjusted the timing. One of the things you have to make sure you do is set it to about 15 degrees timing. All right, so that's the initial. So that's why I had the distributor not hooked up to the vacuum line um, and I just set it to dead nuts 15 degrees. Uh, <laughs> this thing starts oh god i am so happy right now aces damn so far damn all right here's how responsive it is you remember what i did in my original videos right it just cranked and cranked and cranked oh never again buddy watch this three two one and that's all she took all right freaking wonderful display comes on everything looks okay uh, I'm idling right now at 800 okay it fluctuates between 830 to 870 rpm this is exactly what I wanted <laughs> happy camper happy camper Woo! dang wonderful Wonderful. Look at that. Rock steady. AFR is at 13. IAC is at 48. And it's actually coming down. I'm waiting for the sucker to actually even heat up. It's not even hot yet. Fantastic. Look at that. It's still coming down. I love this. I love this thing. Good job, Aces. Wow, what a system. All right, day two after the uh, full installation. I'm going to run it again for the first time ever since then. Let's see how quick it starts. Uh, usually the carburetor would take forever at this point. Let's give it a go. So key on. There's the pump. System booting. All right. Let's see what we got. Okay, it was a little longer to start it off. Oh, that's not good. That's the same thing that my freaking carburetor was doing. Let's try this again. That's not great. That's a little better. Come on now. Okay, she's running a little rich. I can smell it. Wow. The numbers are really high. Yesterday the IAC was right around 40s. And I'm going to adjust it sometime today. So I'm going to let this thing warm up and we'll come back to it. Well, I'm not sure what's going on right now. I actually brought the IAC down to about 16 or 17, but every single time it hits 16 to 15, the engine revs up just like it's doing right now, and then the IAC climbs up to 50 again. I'm gonna let it run for a little while and see if it stabilizes itself. I'm not really sure why it's doing that though. I can't seem to get the IAC to stay below 17. Well, I finally got it dialed in, and here's what ended up happening. I was reading the instructions manual, and it was saying that you have to aim between 6 and 20 for the IAC. Uh, I was aiming for somewhere in between, so between 6 and 20 is 13, and that's what I was hoping for. Uh, I'm not sure if it's any better to go any lower or not, but anyway, I finally reached it. What was going on is, before I got to here, right around 17, uh, the engine would speed up and idle at about, I don't know, 1200 RPM. And so, of course, I would throw my IAC off and everything else was off. Throttle position sensor was all kinds of wacky. So, the, according to the instructions manual, if you try to turn this down and it shoots up in RPM, that's because you need to look at your throttle position sensor. If your throttle position sensor is anything above zero, then basically the car thinks that it is above idle mode, right? So it's running and so it just will idle higher and so your IAC will be wrong. So what I ended up having to do is reset the throttle position sensor. Let's go over that right now. 
Well, the instructions manual doesn't really cover how to reset the, the uh, throttle position sensor, so I figured it out, though. And like an idiot, I just hadn't seen it. It was way at the beginning during the wizard, so you have to go to the four squares and go into wizards, and there you go. Throttle position sensor auto set. So if you're running it, and we're going to go back, you would have been under monitors to figure out whether your throttle position sensors was not right. So you go to sensors, and then you tab over, and if your throttle position sensor is anything more than zero when you were actually running it and you're trying to dial down your IAC, then that has to be reset. So we're going to go back and show you how to do that. You're going to go into wizards, throttle position sensor, auto set. You're going to do this and you're going to say yes. Now I'm like, okay, yes. Hello. Um, did it take? Did it not take? I, I really don't know. What <laughs> I tried the buttons on the sides. They didn't really do anything. So really, the only thing you have to do is say yes, hit save, and there you go. <laughs> Easy peasy. Uh, so when you go to monitors, you go back to monitors, sensors, and you go to TPS, it should say zero. Now, when you start up the car, the throttle position sensor maintains zero, but, oh, where is it? IAC is at 22 and I'll have to see if it comes down on its own. My guess is it will uh, So yeah, there you go. That's how you do this. There you go. I'm under 20 little by little I think it's just gonna keep going under 20 if not I'll fiddle with it and when I'm done I'll just reset the throttle position sensor again. There you go. Looks beautiful Hope that helps you guys out in order to adjust your IAC reading, what you're going to have to do is wait until the car is warmed up. So I believe it said 160 degrees minimum, so that's what you're going to do. Run the engine the way it is, and hopefully you're not going to have an issue. If your IAC reading is high, you're going to shove a Phillips head screwdriver into this screw right here, and you're going to turn it clockwise if it is high. If your reading is low, turn it counterclockwise until you get to the 6 to 20 uh, reading that it is that they say that you're looking for. Now, every single time you make an adjustment to this screw, give it a few seconds and see where it stabilizes at. Don't make hasty changes and only turn this slowly. You'll get there. Uh, yeah, and as I said before, if you go too far on this thing, what will happen is the the throttle body or throttle position sensor will start to think that it is open and no longer an idle and so what will happen is this thing will rev up like it did for me so what you're going to do is you're going to back this bad boy down as low as you can get it close to 6 to 20 and uh, before it starts ramping up so you're going to bring it to as low as possible and then you're going to do your throttle position sensor adjustment uh, just like I showed you and then you'll just begin the process again by trying to bring it down. If it ramps up for you again, you do the same thing. Turn off the engine, a thrust to throttle position sensor, and then run it again until you keep bringing this down and you read 6 to 20. When you're all said and done, make sure that the TPS sensor, the throttle position sensor, is telling you that it's at zero. The last thing you should probably be aware of is the fact that the bottom of your air cleaner might not fit the kill shot anymore. So originally what I had is a dropped down uh, air cleaner base. And as you can see, because of the same situation I had before, the bowls are so large on this thing, it sits on top of the bowls and it doesn't actually mate with the EFI system. So I had to go out and buy a flat bottom air cleaner uh, base. So just something for you to keep uh, in mind uh, because don't let that take you by surprise. It's all buttoned up finally, and we're done. All right, the moment of truth has come. It's time for a test drive. I'm really excited about this one. We'll see how it goes. I'm just gonna go around the block, maybe the community at first. I might just go around the block once or twice before I get too far and then around the community. Uh, cross your fingers. I was able to get the IAC down to 8 and 9. It fluctuates between 8 and 9, so I'm hoping it stays that way. We'll see how this drive goes. Thing of beauty. Thing of beauty. All right, and I was able to fix the uh, transmission linkage getting in the way. Let it stabilize a little bit. It's hunting right now. 
but this engine's always done that. It always seems to want to hunt until it stabilizes itself. Everything looks good. I have 13 volts battery. Um, I have 180 degrees in my coolant temperature. Uh, right now, IAC is starting to drop. It started off at 20, it's down to 13. And uh, air fuel ratio is 13.5. And uh, no, between 13.5 and 13.4. So let's put it in uh, reverse and see what happens. It maintains. It dropped down to 710 and maintained. Now it's back up to 820. Let's head on back. Beautiful, beautiful. Smooth transitions when you're changing gears. I can't ask for anything better at the moment. Okay, from reverse to drive. Beautiful, oh, it's snappy. Oh my goodness, it's snappy. Hanging out at the stop sign, let's see how it goes. Oh, it's so snappy. Oh my goodness, it wants to go. Oh, wow, so smooth, so smooth. Let's go around the block. Nice transitions, changing gears. say so far this is looking really good not bad a little bit of a hesitation but it's still learning oh this is great I'm gonna go around the community a little bit so you know if it continues this way I, I can't say that I find any faults really with this whatsoever um, this has turned out to be a really good purchase provided it continues to run this smoothly um, Really guys, you might want to consider this if you're having as many problems with the uh, carburetor as I have been having. And again, just so you guys remember, the problem with the carburetor was a very hard starts. Um, when I'd come to a stop sign, like I'm about to come to a stop sign right here, right? It would always die on me. So let's see, full stop, hard stop, no problems whatsoever. Gonna go left, yeah, no issues, gets up and goes, no problems at all. Yeah, uh, when driving on the freeway, if I was going fast for quite a while, and then I'd come to the end and come to a stop, it would automatically die. This carburetor that I had had a tendency of uh, gumming up because you know I couldn't drive it all the dang time. But what would happen with was uh, it would flood while driving in a straight line. It would flood on me. Yeah, I was over that. This this is so much better. This is so much better. You know, I'll tell you something else that this system actually fixed. It's something that I thought was not related to the carburetor. One of the things that I actually had experienced in the past was every single time I tried to time my engine, the engine was all over the map. It was actually surging. You can see the timing changing by about five to eight degrees. Up, down, up, down, up, down. It would never stabilize. I really thought that was an ignition problem. I thought I was gonna have to change out my distributor, a coil, maybe it was a bad wire or a bad plug. Turns out it wasn't. Turns out it was my carburetor. Because when I put the timing light on it in order to get that 15 degrees initial, which is what this system is asking for, uh, <laughs> the first time I started it up, I put the timing light on, same timing light on it, and uh, you know what? It was rock steady at 15 when I was done, and it didn't budge, and it didn't move, and it didn't jump. It was perfect. So, score. Beautiful, right back down. Let's try an acceleration. Smooth acceleration. It's beautiful. 2,200 RPM. Remember, it's a two-speed power glide. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. It runs like a champ. I, I cannot complain. Ooh, it is snappy. Another thing that I've changed is actually the return spring on the uh, carburetor that I used to have. So the carburetor wouldn't just return back to neutral position, right? So I had to put this return spring on it. This comes with a built-in spring load on it. And uh, I actually removed my original spring because when you put in 
the spring and attach it and add it to what's already built into the EFI system, the pedal was rock hard. So I didn't have to do that anymore. So I actually removed the spring and the pedal feels really nice. It, it is smooth, soft. Um, it, yeah, it just functions really well. You don't have to put a spring on this thing. And with that, I think this has been a successful test drive. It's time to go home. Well, that was a very successful first run. Uh, if it continues this way, if it just keeps functioning this way, this is probably one of the best investments I have ever made. Um, really, one of the things that attracted me to Asus is their customer support. Um, they seem to be very kind to people um, and just always willing to help. I wanted to be able to give a new company a try um, and maybe put out a video so let's see if anybody can actually do this and I, I, I do believe anybody can do this 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 was wonderful take your time on it uh, amazing uh, super happy with this system right now uh, we'll see how it continues after I don't know some time I'm gonna probably drive it through the streets for a little while before I get the uh, nerve to take it out into the freeway but really as far as I'm concerned, Aces just saved me uh, because this was nothing but a garage queen and a lawn ornament. So now I get to enjoy a car that I always wanted to enjoy, and I think it was worth every penny. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for sticking around. Aces, good job on the system, and thank you very much for uh, just making me a happy camper again, man. This is just... I can't even begin to describe how happy I am right now. Thank you guys for stopping by. Take care of yourselves.